Good morning and welcome to my father's place. I have a word for the church. I have a word for individual believers. And I'm going to use my own experience and that of Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, to help us all see the truth of Christ. And so I'll pray and then get right into it. Father, thank you for this word. It's a familiar passage, but let us not become too familiar with it, Lord. That we think we know everything that's there because you just opened something new to me. That's what you do with your word, Lord. Oh, if your people would read your word, Lord, if, there, if your people would just read, you would show them the depths of your love and of your grace and of your mercy and of your judgment and of your justice and of your righteousness. Lord Jesus, may this word help to prepare your church for your soon coming. Holy Spirit, only by your power will this go forth and do what the Father has sent it to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I give praise to my God. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my king. He is my love. He is my life. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, my God, I give praise to him today. And I thank God for my husband. I thank God for my leaders who are following hard after God and believe him for everything that he says in this word. And I pray you would believe today too. Go with me to Luke 18. And I will read the account and then I will step through it. What do you want me to do for you? If Jesus asks you that question, what will you say? And if you tell him, he will do it. But then, what will you say to him? Will you say, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Will you? Oh, hallelujah. Watch as I go through. As Jesus was approaching Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the road begging. There was no braille. There were no special spools. There were no special jobs that someone who was a beggar, a blind person could do. All they could do was beg. That was it. They were the lowest of the low. They were at the bottom of the ladder. I'm going to speak of Bartimaeus in the first person because I am like him and was like him. I wasn't physically blind yet, but MS was blinding me. Spiritually, I was entirely blind. Stir spiritually, I was entirely destitute. And I had a physical affliction that had turned me from a corporate executive to a beggar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So I am Bartimaeus, and I am blind, and I'm sitting by the road. Someone has led me to this spot, and I'm sitting, and I'm begging so that I have enough food to eat that day. But I hear, I hear a crowd going by and I want to know what it is. My hearing is very keen because I can't see. But I can hear, I hear a crowd, all kinds of people talking. And so I ask, what's going on? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. I've heard of this Jesus. I've heard from people all over. I've heard people talking about him, saying how he healed this one and delivered that one, 
saying how he, could he be the Messiah, the Christ? Could he be the son of David? No one could do the miracles he was doing. I need a miracle. I need Jesus. But I can't go and walk up to him. Someone needs to bring me. He doesn't even know I need him. What am I going to do? I'll cry out. And he called out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Pity me. Let the bowels of compassion in you move toward me because I cannot see. I used to be able to see. I want to be able to see again. I used to be able to see. I used to be able to see when I was a child and I was brought up in the church and I did see Jesus and I did know about him. But I did not know him. And so I was still blind. And I went away. Just like the prodigal went away and blew the inheritance I had in him. Have mercy on me, a sinner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Have mercy on me because I'm a mess from MS. Have mercy on me because I want to know you like this book this pastor showed me. Pastor Doc, he showed me this book that was all about having a personal encounter with Jesus. I mean, one-on-one. -on -one. And it involved repentance. It involved falling on my face before him. So I fell on my face before him and I cried out, Lord, I want to know you this way. You've heard me say it before. Because my first desire was not healing. I didn't believe healing was possible. But I absolutely knew that I could know him in a way nobody had ever told me before that I could know him. I wanted to know him that way. A child of the church, brought up in the church, never knew. And so, I cried out. And I cried out, Jesus Christ, not as a swear word, but acknowledging that he is the anointed one. He is the one whom the Father sent. He is the one who throughout the Old Testament is prophesied about, even by Moses himself, even in the book of Genesis. All of it reflects him. If you don't believe me, ask Paul. Son of David was a messianic title indicating this blind man, this blind man knew and believed that Jesus was the Christ. He never would have called him that title. He would have said sir, he would have said master, he would have said rabbi, but no, he said Jesus Christ and that's that's who I began to cry out for. I want to know you that way. I'm not even asking for healing because I don't even believe that's possible, but I want to know you that way. Glory. Well, this didn't go over well with the crowd. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way. Those who were at the head of the crowd. Those who were leading the crowd. There are many leaders of church crowds that told me to be quiet. They told me, don't cry out. Pastor Doc is giving you false hope. 
your disease is incurable. Don't do this. Go away from Pastor Doc. I couldn't go away. I had to cry out. Suddenly I could see not only could I know him, but there was this possibility through that vision that Pastor Doc spoke from the pulpit, this possibility, this question mark that there just might be healing in the wings of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. So I disregarded the naysayers just like he did. And I, Bartimaeus, say, I'm going to cry out all the more. I know he can heal me. I know he can heal me. I'm going to cry out all the more. And I cried out all the more. I disregarded the naysayers. I had such a burning desire to know this Christ. And I had this thought when I heard that vision, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, just maybe. It was enough to make me cry out all the more. Hallelujah. And Jesus stopped and commanded that I be brought to him, says Bartimaeus. Well, there was no way I could get to Jesus on my own because I couldn't see to find him in a crowd. So Jesus commanded the people in the crowd that were around me to take me by the hand and lead me to Jesus, said Bartimaeus. And that's what Pastor Doc did. I couldn't see. But I said, maybe. I've heard he's done it. Pastor Doc made me do these scripture prescriptions where I would go in and just read and see Jesus. And say, wow, he does that. And he made me read Hebrews 13, which says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And I had said healing isn't for today, but if he's the same yesterday and today and forever, then I was wrong. Because he hasn't changed, beloved. <laughs> he hasn't changed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Have mercy on me, Lord. Pity me. My legs are paralyzing so that I bounce like this when I stand up and I have to use two forearm crutches and I can't feel either one of my feet. They're like bricks. There's no sense of when they hit the ground and so I stumble and without my crutches I fall down all the time. Lord, you know my bladder is at a disaster area. It's not working right. I have these knots. I can't think. My mind is mush. And I have this tremor. Have pity on me. He commanded that I be brought to him. He said to Pastor Doc, this one, she's ready. Pastor Doc said, are you sure? Because when he first asked me if Jesus still healed, I said, oh no, that was for biblical times. And those people you see on TV, they are all charlatans. He went home and he prayed. He told me much later. Got down on his knees and said, are you sure this is the one? Lord said, yes. Bring her to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Doc obeyed you. Even though all the naysayers were saying, oh, you're leading her down a path to nowhere. 
There's no possibility. She's hopeless and helpless. <sighs> and this in the church. Beloved, this in the church. How far we have fallen since the book of Acts. Hallelujah. But there are, there are those who still believe. Thank you for them, Lord. He always has a remnant. He always has a few. I don't care what denomination you're in. I don't care if you're in a non-denominational. I don't care if you just worship at home. There's a remnant. Hallelujah. That believes him for everything. It says you are the same yesterday and today and forever. You have not changed. Hallelujah. I was brought to Jesus. Bartimaeus says, and he asked me, what do you want me to do for you? Can't you see, Lord, I'm blind? I had to be led. You said, bring him. You know I'm blind. Lord, you know my situation. Don't pass me by, Lord. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Why did he ask that when it was obvious? When Pastor Doc told me that third meeting with him, I want you to pray this time at the end of our time together and I want you to tell Jesus exactly what needs to be done in your body. And without hesitation, I had never prayed out loud like that before, but without hesitation I said, Jesus, I said the blood-brain barrier that separates my body's immune system from my brain's immune system, that has been busted through. And there's little helpers if you read my book that are up in my brain and they see it as enemy territory and they're chewing it. And they've chewed right through some and others they're chewing on and it makes my whole body just spasm and do all kinds of weird things that I can't control. Bartimaeus says, mine was easy. I said, I want my sight back. I want to see you again. Oh, glory if the church could see again if she would cry out, if she would say, I want to see you again. I want to see you like you are. Oh, beloved, what the church could do. I want to regain my sight. Lord, I need you to take all the things in my brain that have been chewed by MS and restore them. I need you to kick the little helpers out of my brain and put them back down in the rest of my body where they do good things like heal diseases. Fight them. I need you to restore my optic nerves because my eyes are shot. I need you to restore my ability to think because my mind is mush. I told him all of these things. And then I said, in Jesus' name, amen. So when Bartimaeus said, I want my sight back, and I said all the things I just told you, we wouldn't have said them if he hadn't asked us. And if we didn't believe he could do it, we would never have said them if he had asked us. What do you want him to do for you today? Will you believe that you can go to him with your list and cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me? I began to believe that I could do that. 
so that when Pastor Doc came that third time, after I had just poured over the scriptures, I kept this Bible on my lap, not this one precisely, but I kept my Bible right on my lap all the time, and I surrounded myself with worship music. These were the things pastors said to do, Then I prayed. I started a conversation with God for the first time in my life. Make all this real to me. Show me. Show me. I want to know you. And I also need healing. Now what did Jesus say? Receive your sight. That was a command. On that night of September 1st into September 2nd, when I had a whole wave of doubt come across me, sent there by Satan himself, and Jesus said to my heart, just as clear as a bell, you're sinking in a sea of doubt. And I remembered Peter walking on the water toward Jesus, looking at his circumstances just like I was right then, starting to sink. And then him saying, you're sinking in a sea of doubt. Me knowing that was his voice. Jesus, help me. got out of bed, went to the recliner, sat there with this in my lap, looking at my God and my King. And suddenly, I was healed. Now, for those who doubt I had MS, I should be able to go to Brigham and Women's in Boston and sue the heck out of them for giving me chemotherapy for progressive MS, which they diagnosed me with. I had MS. I do not have MS anymore. And even better, he answered my prayer to know him that way. And that's better than any healing. (laughs) Oh, it is. He gets glory from healing. He got glory from Bartimaeus' healing. He gets glory from my healing because I proclaim it. I shout it from the rooftops. He does get glory. But he also gets glory when he transforms a human being. When he gives them his heart, his love, his spirit fills them, his love, his joy, his peace. All the fruit of the Spirit manifests. Oh my, that glorifies him. That gives him honor. That proves that what he's saying is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeff knows how bad it was. There was just this whole cloud of melancholy a shroud, like a death shroud. Because we knew nothing was going to get better. And then Jesus, somebody brought me to Jesus. I heard about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You will face naysayers who will say, be quiet, but don't. Go for it. Go all out. Say, Lord, I believe you. And he will do it, just as he did with me. Hallelujah. Your faith has made you well. So does faith heal us, or does Jesus? Faith was what made me say to him, here's what I need you to do. Just like Bartimaeus said, here's what I need you to do. If I had not asked him to do it, I would still be sick. 
So in that way, yes, my faith played a role. But who healed me? Wasn't it when he said, see again? That's what it was in the original Greek. See again. That's a command. When Jesus speaks it, it has to be. When Jesus speaks it, it has to be. Not when anyone else speaks, but when he speaks. When he speaks, he is God the Son. Hallelujah. Immediately, I was healed. Immediately, Bartimaeus says, I regained my sight. Immediately. There was no pause. There was no, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that today. Or you're going to have to wait three weeks, five months, three years, your lifetime. People will say of me, you can't say this. Those are the naysayers. But I tell you this. I'm going to say it, and I don't care what they say. Jesus never said no to anyone who came to him. They will say, well, what about Mark 6 when Jesus came to Nazareth and he could only heal a few? Every other place in the book of Mark, there are crowds, except when he's in his hometown, Nazareth. And when he's in Nazareth, there are only a few who believe him enough to come and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People say, well, some people don't get healed. Why? They haven't seen him yet. No one's brought him. No one with faith has brought you to him so that he could say, what do you want me to do for you? Or they will say, oh, no, well, I couldn't ask Jesus that. Or, oh, no, well, well my pastor said some people, some people don't get healed. And, um, no, uh, and, and that's wrong for me to, to cry out to Jesus. Oh, my goodness, I better not. Immediately, I was healed. I got up the next morning, and I felt like I'd been plugged into a supercharger all night after having had MS, which from the time you get up in the morning, even if you've had a good night's sleep, you are immediately in fatigue central station, beloved. You are tired all the time because your body is under continual, continual, continual attack. It never lets up when you have the progressive form, as I did. Never. No pause. No remission. Continual. What happened? Bartimaeus tells you what happened. He immediately was healed and immediately began following Jesus. In other words, Bartimaeus said, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Do you see it? He didn't just say, oh, thanks, Jesus, see you around. He, he and I were like that one leper out of the ten who said, I have to go back. I'm healed. I have to go back and thank Jesus. And he falls down at Jesus' feet and worships him. Jesus tells him to go, but that's so he can go to the priests and ask them to verify that he's healed of leprosy. So, 
I am absolutely sure that leper also followed Jesus. How can you not? How can you not? When he has touched you, when you suddenly have a connection, when your body, which was a disaster area, is healed, how could you do anything else but say, Lord, what would you have me to do for you? Oh my goodness. Because you realize in that moment, it's about giving him glory for what he has done. It's about making sure everybody knows. It's about shouting from the rooftops so that everyone would know that Jesus is still doing these things, that he's the same yesterday and today and forever. My goodness. I'll go back to my career now. I'll go back to my job now. No. I prayed and I asked the Lord. I prayed and fasted and I asked the Lord, do you want me to go back to the job that I've held for 17 years at the VA Or what? And uh, he said, no to the VA. So there went all my benefits. Retirement, health insurance, the same as Congress has. Didn't make any difference to me. I was going to follow him. It's like he said, come. He told Abraham, go and I will show you. He said, come with me. <laughs> and I said, oh, gladly, Lord. <laughs> My life is yours. What can I do for you? <laughs> Glory to God, do you see it? This healing is for his glory. It is his mercy. It is his compassion. It is bowels of compassion. It is an inward moving within him. But it's for his glory. I am healed so I can proclaim that he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my goodness, what would happen? What would happen if the naysayers suddenly had an encounter with Jesus Christ? Because if they are naysaying, beloved, they have never had an encounter with Jesus Christ. What if God stepped down like he did in the Hebrides in the middle of the 20th century and totally that whole set of islands in Scotland repented on their faces for being naysayers and sinning wickedly. What would happen? Those naysayers would have an encounter with the living God and realize he's not just something you believe in and that the Holy Spirit is not just this sort of ethereal thing up in the corner at the ceiling in the right front side of the church as you sit in the pew, and that Jesus Christ really is still alive. We don't just say it. We know it because he's in us. Hallelujah. What would happen? What would happen in you, individual believer, if you invited God to do a one-on-one -on -one with you? You can ask him right now. I, through the internet, am bringing you to him right now. Because he has commanded me to bring you to him. And he's asking you right now, what do you 
want me to do for you? If you will get down on your knees right now and tell him, if you have faith as big as that little mustard seed I had in the night when I reached up and said, Jesus, help me. That's all you need. It wasn't much. Everything I thought I had had been washed away by that wave of the devil. But if you right now, Jesus, this is what I need you to do. Don't give him your finances. Don't give him your job situation. Give him you. And the rest will work out. He wants to change you. And then you will find that your circumstances will change. Because your heart is changed, beloved. If you will answer his question right now, he will say, let it be done. And immediately, not three years down the road, not someday my healing is going to manifest. That is not even scriptural. But immediately, he doesn't deny anyone. If you believe him, if you believe him, a mustard seed. I give you a mustard seed. Here. It's the same one I had. Take it. Father, I'm praying for a personal encounter. For everyone who is listening today. I have brought them to you, Jesus. I pray they would have faith to ask you to tell you what they need you to do for them. Jesus, you're ready. You're waiting. But we're not naming and claiming. We're answering your question. We're saying, here's what's wrong. We're not afraid to say that. Here's what's wrong. Lord, only you can make it right. We're not afraid that if we speak something negative, it will be so. It already is so. Lord, let all those false teachers be made mute, I pray in your name. And let all those who shout from the rooftops shout all the more, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then, Lord, what can I do for you? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.